Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi, my name is Kaylee and I like to build in The Sims 4. I typically use custom content and try to provide you with all the links and things so you can download my builds for yourself, but if you cannot use custom content because maybe you play on console or don't have the computer storage for it, I hope you can still find inspiration from my videos. Now let's get on and discuss a bit about how this build came to be. I was looking at different custom content kits and collections on CurseForge, browsing to see if anything new for my favorite creators had been released, and I was scrolling through SixMCC's archive. I have a couple packs from them, but I don't download everything they release like I do with Pierre Sim or Hey Harry. I just find their CC textures to be very cartoonish, which isn't always what I'm going for. I was scrolling and scrolling, and then I came across this Breeze of Grease kit, and remembered I downloaded it a while ago like long before I shared my builds on the internet and struggled so bad to put it to use because I loved the Santorini color palette, but I wasn't technically built as a build. I wasn't technically scaled as a builder yet to really achieve the exterior look of a Santorini home. This CC kit is pretty large. Most of the items are for build mode. I would say there's only a handful of buy mode items for you to really decorate with. Most things are doors, floor swatches, lots of different windows, and these roof pieces, which are like turrets. So anyways, I saw this kit and was immediately like, oh my God, I need to try building a Santorini style lot. In my last video, I talked about how my ADHD completely took over, which can happen when I get really locked into building. This time, when I got the idea and vision for how I wanted to use this custom content, I was much more organized. It also helps that this took several days because as I mentioned in my previous video, I am now working two jobs so I don't have a single day off in the week and the Saturdays and Sundays I would previously spend building all day long are now occupied as being a server but that's besides the point to be completely transparent I bulldozed the build a couple times before I got to this point on this lot there ends up being three stories the first floor being one apartment unit or vacation villa featuring three bedrooms one bathroom and a full dining room kitchen and living room the second and third floor make up the second apartment unit or vacation villa with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, and another full kitchen, dining room, and living room. Each unit has their own separate entrance on either side of the lot. To start off, I raised basically the entire lot up on a foundation with half walls surrounding the entire property. These half walls become the bane of my existence in a bit, and you'll see why. Right now, I'm going through different wallpapers and trying to pick the perfect one for the exterior. I really wanted to use this blue and white tile from Felix Andre's Grove collection because I didn't use it at all during my limited-ish CC build with the Moroccan Riyadh and I was deeply regretting it. Plus, the blue and white tile matches the Santorini color scheme perfectly. I mean, come on, come on, kid, come on. I don't, <laughs> what am I doing? That one was for the bronies. Um, if you know, you know. I couldn't figure out which plaster to use. I have quite a few in my catalog but end up going with one from Hey Harry's Brutalist bathroom set. Luckily, the wallpaper was pretty simple. As you can see, the shape of this build is literally just a bunch of boxes stacked on top of one another. What makes the building look complete and really fit into the Santorini look are these exterior staircases and balconies leading from one level to the next, as well as these bright blue pergolas, which I pulled from the Breeze Grease set. Also, using half walls instead of railings is key. Although, luckily, we have a solid plaster railway for the stairs that blends pretty well with the look of the wallpaper. I did look at quite a few reference photos to get the shape of things right. I'll add them on screen for you guys so you can see the real life buildings I was inspired by. I didn't copy any one thing exactly, I just took common motifs I saw throughout several photos and tried to incorporate them where I saw fit. And I only used short wall height in this build, which I was very excited about. Every window works just fine on the short wall height, but there were like two doors that required a taller wall height, as well as these built-in plaster bookshelves, which I was really looking forward to using, but couldn't because I was determined to only have short walls. The Santorini cave style homes are built into the sides of mountains and cliffs and don't have high ceilings because they're so densely stacked. Actually, the Greek word for this type of architecture is wiposkafa or iposkafa. I'm not Greek, so don't come for me but it means they're residences that have been carved into volcanic rock, like that's the translation. Because they're carved into hillsides and volcanic rocks, their indoor temperatures are stable throughout the year because they have minimal exposure to the scorching sun, 
which makes sense, of course. Architecture around the world is often invented in response to the local climate and weather. The white plaster and limestone reflects the Mediterranean sun's harsh glares and the blue accents combined with white mimic the Greek flag. Often, they don't have windows all the way around the building because half of it is dug into the mountain, but because this is The Sims and that kind of terrain manipulation is possible but extremely difficult, I opted to just put windows all over the place. It also looks better for screenshots to have more natural light. According to my research, aka the first website I clicked on just now, typically Ipascafa or Wipascafa are long and deep with narrow facades, windows, and are usually covered by domes in all sizes and shapes. The living room is at the front where there is more natural light and the bedrooms are in the back. In between lies the traditional kitchen, usually accompanied by a fireplace, and the bathroom is situated outside the house. I didn't even know all of that when I set out to do the floor plans, but I'm so pleasantly surprised to learn that because I kind of did that intuitively. I mean, not the bathrooms. Bathrooms are included inside. But I mean, the living rooms are where the most natural light is, and then the bedrooms are dark little caves. As you can see, I'm mixing and matching the different types of windows included in this kit. These large picture windows have two different variants. One has the shutters closed and the other has them slightly opened. Interestingly, you can't see the shutters from the inside. It's as if they're not even there. I think this might typically bother me, but I like that for privacy. It's like a one-way mirror, you know? I'm also living for the way the sunlight spills through the shutters and into the living room. It's already starting to come together so beautifully. Next to the real life photos, I would say this lot has more differences and similarities to the traditional Santorini style cave houses, but this is a video game, so all I can do is my best. It's not going to look exactly like the real thing, and honestly, that's never in my intention with builds unless I state otherwise. I just enjoy getting really inspired by and learning about different architectural styles from around the world and seeing how it influences my own design style in The Sims. At this point, every single thing I've used in building has been base game, or you can find it included in the Breeze of Greece collection by 6MCC, which will be linked in the description box along with the majority of the other CC kits I use. While I do a great job with sticking to one or two CC collections for the exterior, the interior of this build uses so many different custom content creators and collections. I didn't download anything new or out of the ordinary from the typical creators and collections I use, but because Breeze of Greece is so sparse in furnishings, I had to turn to creators like the Clutter Cat, Pierre Sim, and Felix Andre for lots of clutter. Perhaps long ago, when these types of houses were first conceived and created, they were quite small and minimalistic with built-in shelves carved into the limestone walls. However, the villas in this build are very modern and furnished for wealthy tourists and vacationers. Now I'm getting started on figuring out the floor plan for the first floor. I wasn't expecting to be able to fit as many rooms in here as I do or nail the floor plan on my first try. Most builders will do the floor plan first before adding windows all around the building because sometimes walls will just have to go in places where you'd rather put a window and it gets a little tricky. But I feel like I really lucked out with the spacing of everything in this build. I really didn't struggle too much with the floor plans. Also, having the staircases on the exterior was so helpful in floor planning and saving space indoors. I thought building the exterior of this thing was going to take me forever. But compared to how long it took me to furnish the interiors, it was a breeze. Of course, at this point, I don't have much on the exterior besides the actual building itself, but I'll be adding a pool and some more outdoor activities in a bit. For now, I'm going around and replacing the default concrete floors with some white concrete or plaster from Hey Harry's Clean collection. And for the bathrooms, I use Felix Andre's Grove tile flooring in the default blue and white colorway. On the walls, I just use the same wallpaper as I did for the exterior. On the exterior, it looks kind of warmer, like a beige, but on the inside, you can tell it's actually white. That's because the lighting in Oasis Springs is very yellow and warm. Maybe that's why I like building in this world so much. The lighting on each lot is consistently solid, the gallery photos look great, and the light is much warmer. I feel like in most other worlds, the lighting tends to be very blue, which I would think I would like because blue is my favorite color, but it kind of desaturates things and makes whites look gray and cold. I'm an Oasis Springs girly through and through. If you could only pick one base game world to build or play in for the rest of your life, 
which would it be? Okay, I yapped over this part, but you just saw me go through and change the ceilings in all the rooms. I was planning on leaving it white, but then I saw this photo of a bedroom with bright blue wooden beams and knew exactly where I could find a similar effect in my catalog. Pierre Sims Woodland Ranch Collection, which I believe has just two parts, comes with so much good stuff that's applicable for this build style, especially because a lot of the items like the fireplace and the kitchen counters have a plaster texture, but it also comes with a flooring swatch of wood that's meant to be ceiling paint, and guess what bitches, it comes in a couple different blue swatches! So it's in every single room. It's a small detail, like you're never gonna see it if you play with walls down, which most people do. But if you like to take screenshots of your sims, it's a nice detail that makes the interiors really pop, especially since there's so much white inside. I went with these plaster kitchen counters with open shelving because all the other counters I have are either wood or metal and that was definitely not the vibes in here. Even the normal counter variant for this set had the little wood cupboards on them and I wasn't feeling that. I used the Woodland Ranch kitchen appliances as well for the sake of consistency and to make it a little simpler for you guys to download this build and not have too many things missing or replaced if you don't have all the custom content. But I also mixed the kitchen stuff with Felix Andre's Grove collection because that has some great plaster items too, like plaster shelves and this plaster range hood that I always wish I could use more than I do in my builds. I messed around with the shape and flow of this kitchen more than you guys saw on camera. It's kind of a funky layout because the front door leads straight into the kitchen, which I always find just a little weird. Like, there's hardly anything by the front door to indicate that it's an entryway. And then in order to have enough space for the living room, I had to stick the dining table smack dab in the center of the kitchen. It's not the craziest layout or anything, this happens a lot in real life. I'm just not a fan, and I guess I try to avoid layouts like this when I can. But here, it feels quite cozy and actually goes very well with the defining features of the Santorini cave homes that we just learned about. Like it feels very tight and narrow, but not stuffy or anything. I put these white marble benches from Breeds of Grease in the living room as a built-in shelf slash seating area. Normally I prefer wall-mounted TVs, but I was not willing to give up these floor-to-ceiling windows with beautiful views and light. Instead, I raised up a tabletop TV and angled it in the corner of these benches. The screenshots of this living room are so insane. I think this might be my all-time favorite build to date. I was kind of stuck for a while trying to figure out what I wanted the living room to look like, particularly the couch. But then I remembered the curved couch from Felix Andre's Paris set, which is another item I'm obsessed with but doesn't really fit the aesthetic of just any build. It works so perfectly for the shape of this living room, which is on a diagonal and kind of just in the middle of the room. I add a ton of pillows from various creators and collections whose names mostly escape me at the moment. I know I used some from Felix Andre's Grove, I think some from Pierre Sims Winter Garden, and some from the Clutter Cat's Fairylicious, and I want to say Baby Boo. I just wanted there to be cushions everywhere to warm up the place since all this white and plaster can feel very hard and cold. The small wooden coffee table is from Pierre Sims David's apartment and I furnished it with a candle and some water glasses to make it feel lived in. I think these units are suitable for various different scenarios you can play out with your sims. If you have the for rent expansion pack, you could turn these into apartments for your sims to rent out or maybe this is purely a vacation destination for your sims to visit. I was thinking the bottom floor could be where the landlord lives with their family and they rent out the second and third floor to tourists and honeymooners. But honestly, clutter wise, the furnishings are pretty minimal, especially in the bedrooms. You know, I didn't add toys or full closets or anything. I do go a little crazy with the kitchen clutter in both units, which isn't very realistic if it's not actively being lived in, but listen. Ever since the public release of Pierre Sims Pantry Party, I simply cannot help myself. This shit is too good not to include in every build. Like, what do you mean, a kitchen with no clutter? I can't even imagine that in The Sims. It would look so boring. Although, I bet it'd cut the time it takes to build and furnish these places in half. <laughs> Whatever, it's not my fault. I blame Pierre Sim. Also, if you're looking for really good decorative objects, I highly recommend you check out Pierre Sim and the Clutter Cat. Okay, but also these counters have all this open storage with the shelves. It would look weird if I didn't fill it up. Not gonna hold you though, I forgot to add items in the counters on the other side of the kitchen where the stove is, so it's pretty empty. Maybe this is a vacation unit too. I don't know. I didn't have a specific sim in mind I was building this for, I was more so building this for the sake of building. 
To add some finishing touches on the walls, I hung some plates in this blue and white sign from Pierre Sims Oak House collection and a wall fan from the Clutter Cat's Sunny Sunday, and then it's on to the bathroom. Now, this bathroom is a little small to be shared among three or four people, but that's all I could fit in here. I created my own DIY shower using the wall shower from Peacemaker's Hudson Bathroom. It's a great kit. I don't have much of Peacemaker's collections installed in my computer, but he has some really beautiful and functional sets. The toilet is from Hey Harry's Coastal Collection, and the sink is from Pierre Sims' MCM Collection. I paired it with a floating shelf from Felix Andre's Soho bathroom set for some extra towel storage, and the mirror and bath mat are from Hey Harry and Felix Andre's Basic Collection. Next to the bathroom, off of the living room, is the primary room. I had no idea what I was going for when I started on it, so I was pulling stuff from 6MCC's boho bedroom set, but realized it's a little too boho. I needed it to be more minimal and white, so I opted for this modular bed set from Hey Harry and Felix Andre's Harlux set. This collection came out years ago at this point, but it's still just such a good set with so many useful items. There are a couple different bed bases to choose from and two different headboard options. I went for the extra wide bed platform, which has a bit of a ledge on it and I imagine might be really inconvenient if you're someone who's clumsy and is constantly bumping your shit on things. Like I would definitely be bruising up my shins on the corners of this bed. For the headboard, I just chose the lower one and it makes the bed and side tables look built into the wall. It also brings more of the modern feeling from the living room into the bedroom. I gave them some simple dresser drawers with a small TV on top facing the bed. Of course, I had to toss in a chair to throw their clothes and suitcases on. You're about to watch me struggle with the wall decor in this room. Normally, I can count on windows and curtains to take up wall space in each room, but this room might be the only one that doesn't have any windows. It's truly a Santorini cave. I was trying to look at reference pictures to see what people use to decorate blank walls in real life, and I'll pop those pictures up on the screen right now. I saw lots of beach motifs, of course, as well as woven baskets, which is perfect because Grove has these woven baskets and they come in a blue swatch. Ultimately, I don't think I keep them though. As you can see, I brought Johnny Zest to this lot so I could adjust the brightness of these wall sconces in live mode because they were way too bright against the white wallpaper and I'm not the biggest fan of the shadows they cast on the headboard. Johnny Zest is also my tester sim during the screenshot, so I got him to playtest the build and everything is fully functional. The primary bedroom actually has a little back door that leads you out onto the covered patio where there are tables and plastic chairs under the pergola, as well as an L-shaped pool and a grill. It's like a common area. Okay, speeding along, I gotta catch up. In this super tiny hallway leading to the other two bedrooms, I put a cubby bookcase from Hey Harry's Octave Collection. This would have been the perfect spot for those bookshelves included in Breeze of Grease, but they're only for medium wall height. It's okay, I feel like these cubbies achieve the same effect and I never knew this bookshelf comes in this cobalt blue swatch. It's such a fun color and I'm so happy it matches perfectly with the color scheme of the villa, of course. I finished it with various decor objects, books, boxes, knickknacks, and statues. I included some Greek philosopher busts because when in Greece. Okay, moving on to the other bedrooms. This one has a single bed. It's definitely the smallest room, and it's weird because we're working with a diagonal wall in here. To make the bed feel a little more like it's also built into the plaster walls, I lined some concrete blocks along the wall, like a headboard or something. They're classified as shelves from Hey Harry's Brutalist bathroom set. Honestly, they're just good for having more surfaces to add decor without taking too much floor space. I add a large full body mirror from the Clutter Cat Sunny Sunday on the long diagonal wall, but end up covering up half of it to make a makeshift vanity using some dresser drawers. And then in the corner, I throw a hanging shelf with a plant and a blue chair in the corner, and then it's off to the next bedroom. This one is slightly larger, so I added another double bed. The base is from Hey Harry's Country Collection, and the actual bedding is just some generic one from Felix Andre. The woven rope side tables are from Tuds, and they come in a blue swatch, which I used to tie in more color to this space. I added some more of these wall sconces from Breeze of Grease. I really love the shape and size of them, but having to adjust the brightness and color of each one in live mode was getting real tedious. We've got a teensy set of dresser drawers from Peary Sims Teeny Weeny, and the same blue chair as in the other room from 6MCC. The curtains in here are a bit more sophisticated too. I wasn't sure how to use all this wall space, so a trick I do when I'm lazy and don't want to add details to every corner of the room is I just use curtains that take up the whole wall. 
These ones are from Pierre Sims Domain du Clos, but Felix Andre and Hey Harry have my other favorite curtains in their organic collection. I just realized I swapped out that blue chair for this one from my Shuno son. Usually when it comes to CC, I'm good about remembering the different kits and collections they belong to. But with my Shuno son's custom content, I can never remember the set names. I added some hanging plants above the chair. These ones are from Sixum CC and Pieri Sim. Now that I finished the first floor and have a solid idea of what I want this build to look like, I return to the outdoors to furnish the patio and the landscape. This is where the half walls start fucking with me and trying my patience. So originally, this entire lot was raised up on a foundation, right? Well, I realized, hmm, I should probably add some stairs <laughs> so your sims can actually access all of this. But you know, I wanted the stair placement to make sense. Also, there should be more than one stair spot, but I wasn't really thinking any of this through. I come back to that later, and that's a whole nother thing in itself. So, I add the stairs, which requires drawing more half walls. I furnish the pool area with a couple of sun loungers, and then I'm like, huh, these patio tables look like they could use a grill. So I placed a grill from the base game down, just a simple stainless steel one. But now the area where the grill is just looks so boring and plain. To spice it up, I created some planter boxes using more tiny half walls and debug shrubbery. I was also looking at reference photos for landscaping these parts. Okay. But now, every time I add more little half walls, all the blue and white tiling that was previously on there deletes itself. Couldn't tell you why, but I just know this is a part of the game's limitations, and these are just the physics of building The Sims 4. Like gravity, sometimes it sucks, but you cannot change it. So, I kept doing this thing where I draw another wall, the game deletes the wallpaper, and then I go back and add it in, then decide to add another wall somewhere else, and the cycle just keeps repeating itself. Bloody annoying. That was horrible. I'm so sorry. What does that say about me? Probably that I'm stupid because I should have just saved all the wallpapering for the end when I knew I was happy with the planter boxes and landscaping, but he, he, that's not how my brain works, I guess. Look at me. Ugh, despicable. If only past Kayleen knew what future Kayleen knows now. So yeah, just needed to get that off my chest. <laughs> But on the bright side, it means more gentle cha-ching sounds in the background. Have you guys watched these Sims 4 building ASMR videos? I watch them when I crave building something but can't. The sound of placing walls and objects are just so satisfying. I also kind of did the same thing with the exterior, exterior landscaping, like the plants that I put around the edges of the lot to fill in the gap between the foundation and the edge of the lot. I kept adding stairs, then lowering the lot back down to ground level so I could landscape, which would inevitably delete all the stairs I just placed, then raising it back up on a foundation, adding the stairs back, and seeing how the landscaping looked with everything. But at least adding stairs isn't as tedious as replacing all the wallpaper, especially in these little one tile wide nooks and crannies. Ever since the release of the Crystal Creation stuff pack last week and game update, my game has been showing all the debug landscaping items alongside the regular landscaping items. I don't know if this is because I had Twisted Mexi's Better Build By mod installed when my game updated and it's just a glitch, or if this is actually a part of the new update. Like, I didn't have to input any cheats in order to see all these items in the Build By catalog. Is this just me? I mean, I'm not complaining. Having debug directly accessible in the catalog is so nice. Inputting those cheats every time I start up the game isn't a huge deal, but I'd rather not have to do it. Anyways, these bushes are my new favorite landscaping item. I love the color and texture, and they look great in all sizes. They're the perfect filler plant. I don't do anything too crazy with the landscaping on the exterior, but I do focus a little bit extra on the front of the lot because I want it to have that curb appeal in the gallery pictures. You can see I'm placing down a bunch of these wild shrubs you find throughout Oasis Springs, and in the spaces between, I add lots of lavender. This landscaping doesn't really reflect the Santorini style, but it does help blend the building into the desert environment. So anyways, I do a bunch of landscaping, but I'm just gonna go right ahead and speed that up so we can get on to furnishing the second and third floor. Oh, I do go ahead and add a little seating area to the back side of this build as well because that's technically where the front door is for the first floor villa. I use more of those stone benches from Breeze of Grease to create a little fire pit area. How cute is that? 
The Fire Pit is from Hey Harry and Felix Andres Jardin set. You all know I love this set. It's actually a necessity when it comes to furnishing patios, like I cannot build without it. As for the pillows, I love using these clustered ones that come in the Clutter Cats Busy Bee set because they're so easy. Like, you don't gotta individually place each one, just throw the cluster on there and you're good to go. Moving on to the second floor entrance, which is accessible via the outdoor staircase in the front of the lot. Outside the front door is a small balcony patio where I place some patio chairs and a side table with some wine glasses. I can imagine Sims sitting out here to watch a sunset with some fruit and their wine. What a relaxing way to end the day in Sim Torini. I also add a blue easel up here because it fits with the color scheme and the more skill building items the better, right? That's my philosophy. I don't even play with sims like that, but I just like having activities for my sims to do, especially if it makes them money. Inside, I kind of jump straight to the back side of the villa where the kitchen is. Instead of a completely open plan living and dining area like the first villa, this one is a little bit more separated. The kitchen fit perfectly in this little square of a room. I'm using the exact same counters and appliances as downstairs to keep things cohesive. I really wanted to fit this fireplace from Woodland Ranch somewhere in this kitchen, but it just didn't feel right. I moved it to the living room for now, but that will also change, and ultimately, it'll find its place upstairs in the honeymoon suite. To finish off the kitchen, I added these modular closets from Hey Harry and Felix Andre's basic collection to create a pantry. I don't know why I've never thought to do this before, but oh my god, I'm definitely going to repeat this in future builds. I love the way this turned out. Especially with the sliding glass doors, you can still see the silhouettes of all the food and dishes stored away in there. Tell me why I'm getting worked up over a pixelated pantry right now. I should be embarrassed, but I'm not. Fun little fact, this is also the only trash can in this entire build. <laughs> I did forget to add one outside, but you know what? Y'all can do that yourselves. There are also no smoke detectors at all. Honestly, I'm team anti-smoke detector. <laughs> They're ugly as hell. And if that means that this build will catch on fire if a sim tries to cook in here unsuccessfully, then so be it. I don't even play in my own builds anyways. Now we're working a little backwards, back towards the front of the house. The dining table and chairs are the exact same as the ones downstairs. For the living room, I opted for this sofa from the Coastal Collection in a basic white swatch and used a lot of throw pillows to bring in the accent blue color. And as I'm looking at the dining area from the living room, I'm thinking it needs a little something extra. The room simply looks too boring. So I went back and grabbed some more of these cubby bookshelves, the same ones that I used downstairs, but these are in a different height. Because they're modular, I can create my own kind of buffet table table my own buffet table or sideboard and it ties more of the blue into the room also the bright color at the back of the room really pulls you into the space from the front door i add a long mirror above it and then go to town decorating these shelves with more useless objects and greek statues and things i added a plate of bananas from tuds and a bowl of lemons from felix andre I really love the way this living area turned out too. I don't know if I can pick between the two. Let me know in the comments which you prefer more, the first one or the second one. I like that I was able to define the entryway a bit more in this villa because there's just more space. I added a bench from Hey Harry Shop the Look and cluttered it up with some shoes and pillows. These framed paintings and pictures of beach scenes are from Charlie Pancake's Lighthouse Collection. I'm a beach girl to my core, so these framed pictures are my go-tos, especially when it's a beachy build. Otherwise, a lot of the framed wall art that has the matching blue colored frame is from 6MCC's Breeze of Greece. Girl, that bathroom went by so fast. <laughs> Did y'all even catch that? Woo, we are flying through this part of the build. The bathroom is larger than the one shared by all those sims downstairs because it's got a separate tub and shower. They are living luxuriously. Love the natural light shining in there. The secondary bedroom I'm furnishing right now is quite small as you can tell. It's got just enough room for a double bed and that's really it. I managed to squeeze in a tiny dresser table from the Clutter Cat and then did a gallery wall opposite the bed, added a plant and called it a day. On to the third and final floor. Let's go, baby! I'm recording this voiceover late as hell, and I got work early in the morning, so I'm really just speeding to get this video up. So, the third floor is accessible via another outdoor staircase off of the 
balcony connected to the kitchen. Did that make sense? Stay with me here. I added another private fireplace and bench seating like I did outside the first villa, but this one is only for the honeymooners or whoever is staying in this two-story villa. I keep calling it a honeymoon suite because it's got the largest bedroom and bathroom and it's very private. Like the entire third floor is solely the bedroom and bathroom. They've got panoramic views and plenty of space up here. I did individually place all of these pillows though couldn't tell you where they're from to be honest. This is also when I popped back downstairs to add in the blue easel because I was adding some more skill building items to the back balcony like a gardening box and a telescope. As for the biggest and final bedroom, I start with the bed, naturally. I use the same bed and bedding combo from Harlux that I used in the first villa and go for these curtains from Felix Andre's Grove collection in a creamy white. And then finally, I add this Woodland Ranch fireplace that I've been dying to include. The plaster material and the rounded shape of the hearth. Is that how you pronounce it? Hearth? Hearth? I think it's hearth. It just fits so perfectly with the Santorini style. There's some bench seats at the foot of the bed from Hey Harry's Octave and some armchairs in a corner because I didn't know what to do with the space. I also added these luggage pieces by the door from Felix Andre's Florence set and get this. They're called Samoa luggage in the catalog. Get it? Like Rimoa? Felix Andre is cheeky like that. Anyways, I give them some big dresser drawers with some baskets of extra blankets, finish off the bathroom, and that is it for this build, you guys. It is way past my bedtime. <laughs> I need to end the voice over here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It would really help me out as well as subscribe, of course. Your support means the world to me and I appreciate each and every one of you. If you'd like to download this build, you can find it on the gallery. My EA ID is prof woman child, P-R-O-F woman child, or you can search the hashtag professional woman child or the hashtag the crimson shade. But all of that info is linked in the description box as well as a list of the majority of the CC I use in this build for your downloading convenience. Oh, be sure to toggle the include custom content box on the side panel of the gallery, otherwise none of my shit's gonna pop up for you. Okay, I think that's everything. I'll talk to you all in the next video and enjoy the screenshots.